All right, guys, today we're going to take a look at another vector database called Pinecone. At first, we're going to take a look at the Pinecone UI. And then I'm going to show you how you can create an index, insert records into your database, do a semantic search across all your records, and finally, how you can fetch individual records by their ID. So to begin with, let's look at the UI. Uh, so Pinecone gives, it, uh, gives you a UI that you can use to navigate your data. Uh, so in our database, we have essentially five rows of data, and each row has an ID, category, and chunk text. I'm going to get to chunk text in a bit. Uh, so these are the five rows of data that I have, and then soon you're going to see how I can do semantic search across uh, all the different rows. One thing to note is even though it is a vector database, over here you don't see the vector. Uh, that is because in the UI, uh, Pinecone does not show you the vector, but you're going to soon see in code that for every chunk text, uh, Pinecone automatically generates a vector. Okay, so that's the UI, and we're going to come back to this in a little bit. Uh, but for now, let's get into the code, and I'll show you how you can uh, carry out all four of these operations. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start uh, uh, with is creating an index. Uh, think of index like a cluster where you're going to host all your data. So uh, the index creation is happening over here. Okay. So at first, uh, I'm setting up a Pinecone client and passing it the API key, which is stored in a local.env uh, file for me. Um, you can also just hard code the uh, API key over here if you'd prefer that. Um, then you have to give your index a name. Uh, in my case, I'm giving it example index with embedding. And if I switch back to the UI, you're going to see that that is exactly what my index is called. Okay, so that's the name of the index. And then I'm checking to uh, see if the index already exists, because if it already exists, then we don't need to create it again. Uh, if it does not exist, uh, then this is where the index is being created. Okay, and then uh, how do I create the index? It's very easy, Pinecone client, which is coming from the Pinecone library, gives you a method called create index for model. You pass it a couple of metadata, uh, starting with the name of the index, and then uh, which cloud uh, region you're going to be hosting it in, which cloud provider you're going to be using. And finally, this is the embed parameter, which is very important. Uh, this is where you tell your cluster how to generate embedding or vector for your text. Now, a couple of things. The model I'm using over here is the model that uh, comes out of the box from Pinecone but you can use a model from OpenAI or any other provider that you uh, that suits your needs. Uh, and then you see the parameter field map and it says text, chunk text. What it does is tell, uh, this tells Pinecone that whenever you see a field called chunk text, that is the main field that you should use to generate embeddings for. Okay, so if I switch back to the UI, you're going to see that the chunk text in each case, I'm about Golang, I'm about MongoDB, I'm about Redis, MySQL, system design. All of these are that uh, are the pieces of text that I want to generate embeddings for because when I'm doing a semantic search, I want this to be uh, the main thing that the search system is looking at. Okay, so that's where this parameter comes in. So this is pretty important and others are just configuration metadata. Okay, so with this, the index uh, should be created over here. Okay. All right. So now we're going to move to, uh, let me see. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm creating it. And then this is where I'm referencing it, right? So this is what we're going to use moving forward. Okay, the first operation we're going to take a look at is data insertion. This is going to be inserting a piece of data into Pinecone. So Pinecone does an upsert, which makes your job very easy because we don't have to 
uh, every time check if the row already exists, pinecone does this, uh, does this for you. So you need to give it a na namespace, which is a logical separation of your data. So you can have multiple namespaces for a given cluster. So if I switch back to the UI, you're going to see that for my index called example index with embedding, I have only one namespace. Okay, called example namespace, but I can create multiple namespace, uh, multiple namespaces, and store uh, data with a logical separation between them. But in this exa example, we're going to keep it simple and only keep one namespace. Uh, okay, so when you are uh, invoking the absurd records uh, function or method, uh, you give it the namespace and then you give a list of records that you want to insert. In our case, every record, so every row of data, has an ID, chunk text, and category. Chunk text is where most of our data is going to live. In this case, we have only one sentence, but you can think of it as a PDF text. So let's say if you have a PDF and you turn, uh, you, you parse all the text from the PDF, you could easily add them to the chunk text here. And in that case, what's going to happen is every record is going to be a separate PDF. Similarly, if you have only one PDF, you can break that PDF apart uh, into, or you can break that PDF into multiple paragraphs. And for every paragraph, you can create a record. But in this case, to keep the demonstration simple, I'm going to just use simple one line for each chunk text. Uh, that should make things much more manageable. Okay, and if you remember, when we were actually creating the client, we mentioned that uh, chunk text is going to be the field where uh, which we want Pinecone to generate embeddings for. And that's the same name we're using here. Uh, we're giving it a category uh, just to be able to filter a little bit more. And this is something we're going to also take a look at um, in a little bit. Okay, so when it comes to upserting uh, records, that's all you have to do invoke the function with the namespace and then give it a bunch of records over here. Okay, so that is inserting records. The next thing we're going to take a look at is semantic search uh, or just searching through a vector database. So what semantic search does as opposed to like a keyword search is instead of actually looking for the exact string in your data, it tries to get to the meaning of the different pieces of text. Okay, so typically when you're doing a search for your database, uh, you uh, try to find that keyword. So let's say if I'm searching for, uh, tell me about caching technologies, in a key in a keyword based search, uh, the algorithm is going to go through all the data in our database and try to find uh, caching technologies. But instead, in a semantic search, it's going to try to understand the meaning of caching technology and then show you the different caching technologies like, uh, uh, in this case, it's going to be Redis. Okay, as we look at the example, you're going to, uh, it's going to be much more clear. Um, okay, so let's see how you want to, or you can do a semantic search. So I'm going to jump back to the UI. So the UI gives you a way to do semantic search as well. So let's say if I do the same search here, so let's say I tell it, tell me about caching technologies and paste it here and search. You're going to see that I'm getting Redis as the top match. And then I have a couple of others. Okay. And that is because I'm telling it to return me K. So 10 results. If I instead give it one, and now we're getting the best match, which is Redis. Similarly, if I say, uh, what are good examples of relational databases, right? And then do a search. Um, you're going to see that I'm getting MongoDB. So let me just quickly expand this to two. Uh, so then I have a MySQL. Let me just quickly take a look. Uh, I did have MySQL. It's interesting that it is not understanding that MySQL is a relational database, uh, but hopefully you get the idea. Like uh, instead of actually looking for MySQL, 
it would ideally understand that MySQL is a relational database and give me that text. But in this case, it is not. But let's try another one. Uh, let's say, uh, tell me about a programming language. Let's see if we can get this one. Uh, so in this case, it does. It does know that Golang is a programming language and that is the best match. And then you get the others. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why it did not get my SQL, but we can come back to that later on. So through the UI, that's how you do a semantic search, but we're gonna take a look at how you can do the same through code. Um, okay, so through code over here, again, it's very simple. Uh, Pinecones library gives you the functions to do it. Uh, it has a method called search records, and all you need to pass to the, to the method is the namespace, again, uh, the query, we're gonna look at the query, and then fields. Uh, what does each of these do? Uh, namespace, we already talked about. Query is gonna be your, uh, the text, right? So essentially the text over here is gonna be your query, or at least the input of your query. Top K is gonna be how many results you want the, you want Pinecone to return. Uh, filter, we're gonna come to in a little bit. And then fields, uh, this is gonna uh, tell Pinecone which fields you want to see in your result. Okay, so when you get ranked result for every row of data it's returning, you can tell it which fields to give you back. Uh, okay, so let's actually run this one and then we're gonna take a look at category as well. So I'm gonna quickly run this and then we'll give it a minute for the algorithms to run. There you go. I'm gonna scroll all the way up. Also, I'm gonna just quickly remove this so that it's much cleaner. And we're gonna run it one more time. Um, okay, so when I run it one more time, this is what you get. So uh, you are getting two rows of data. That's because we set top K to two. And then the first row, which is the best match, is I am about Redis, which makes sense because in our question, we told it to give us caching technologies. And the second one doesn't really matter too much. Similarly, if we did tell me about programming languages and run it again, uh, it should give us the Golang row. And we are getting Golang here. And now if I set top K to one, you should only get the Golang row. give it a minute to run. There you go, we are only getting Golang. Now, let's see how filter works here. Um, without a filter, when you're running the query, Pinecone is looking through all the rows of data here, instead of picking which rows to actually take a look. But instead, you, with a filter, you can, where's filter? With a filter, you can tell Pinecone which rows to get your data from, or to get your result from. So if I uncomment it, I'm saying that filter category programming. So now it's only gonna look at rows where category is set to programming. So if I go back to the data here, uh, my category programming is Golang and system design, okay? So now when I ask it about uh, tell MongoDB, it should not be able to give me row uh, with ID three because it's not even scanning that row. So let's try it out. So I'm gonna say, tell me about MongoDB. And run it. We'll give it a second again. And now you see we're not getting the MongoDB row, which we should get, because this is the closest match. And that is because we're telling our query to only scan rows where category is set to programming. Uh, and for the MongoDB row, category set to database, not programming. Now instead, if I set the filter to only look at rows with category uh, set to database and then run it, it should be able uh, to get the result that we want. There you go, now it's giving you the MongoDB row. Um, okay, so that's where filters come in. You can use it if it makes sense. Otherwise, you can just as easily run your query without any filter. So you can just like comment it out. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so that is semantic search. Uh, that's the biggest use case for vector database. In the last video, we saw how you can do it with Chroma DB. And in this one, we're seeing how you can do it with Pinecone. Now, the very last thing we're gonna go through in this video is gonna be how you can uh, fetch a row from the database, not through a semantic search, but just by an ID. So essentially, like any other database, MySQL, MongoDB, where you uh, know the ID for your row and you wanna get that row, you should be able to just do a simple query rather than needing to, uh, needing to do a semantic search. So I'm gonna comment this one out as well to make things cleaner. Okay, and I'm gonna clear this. So uh, let's just clean this up, perfect. Uh, so to be able to do that again, Pinecone gives a very easy method called dot fetch. And uh, to the fetch method, you pass the namespace and then a list of IDs. In this case, I'm giving it one ID, which is gonna be ID one. Uh, and if you take a look at the data here, uh, I'm gonna get rid of this. Uh, ID one is, uh, uh, where is it? Category programming, chunk text, I am about system design. So if I run this here, you're gonna see we're gonna get a very large output. So I'm gonna give it a second. Now you see all these, the fetch record is here. So the print statement from line 103. Everything you see after that is the data stored in the database for that ID. And you see a very, so let's just go through it. So you have the namespace and then you have vectors. And this is the embedding for that row of data. So this is the embedding for I'm about system design. So you have all the numbers, which is your embedding. I'm gonna scroll all the way down. And then you see the other metadata, which is the category programming, chunk text, I'm about system design, uh, and the usage, okay? So this is all the data we're storing for uh, this piece of, uh, or this row over here. So you don't see the vector in the UI because it doesn't make a ton of sense. It's just a bunch of numbers. But when you are fetching the row by its ID, you can actually see that uh, it is generating the vector. And again, how does it know which field to generate the vector for? Uh, in this case, it does it for chunk text and that mapping is defined when you are uh, instantiating your index over here. Um, okay, so that's how you fetch records by ID. Uh, Pinecone gives you a bunch of other methods that you can use to query your data, but these should be enough to get you started if you wanna use Pinecone uh, as the vector database of choice in your next project. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, uh, and I'll see you folks in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.